do you ever ask the question why you're here, what you're supposed to be doing, what's this all about? I do. And when I've done that, um, I've tried to come up with an answer. So my big idea is this, and I think to find the answer to that question, what you've got to do is do something like volunteer for a nonprofit with a mission that you deeply care about, because it'll help you find the question, which I think the answer to the question, which I think is about meaning. Let me start years ago. So after September 11th, when the Twin Towers fell in New York City, the New York Times published a series of columns. They were called Portraits of Grief. And those portraits of grief explained, they explained about what these people did in their communities, who they were and the impact they had. And the columns that meant the most to me were the ones that started with titles like, was a friend to everybody filled space, helped out others. And I thought, boy, when I'm gone, I'd like to be remembered for that. I'd like to be remembered for having an impact and for helping others and for serving others. I wasn't born that way, I had to come to it. I'll tell you a little bit about how it, how it started. So when I was about 10 or 11, <clears throat> I made the mistake one summer early in the summer of saying to my parents that I was bored. If you've ever done that, you should know that it's a really big mistake because parents will do one thing and it will be to make sure you're, you're busy. They hate that question. They hate hearing that. So that's what my parents did. My father at the time was a cardiologist and he was a volunteer for the American Heart Association. And so what he said is, I'm gonna introduce you to Shirley who organizes all the volunteers and she's gonna put you to work. And I groaned and I thought, oh, I can't believe I ever stupidly said this. And then I went to work for Shirley. And Shirley said, I need help putting on a walkathon. And I thought, oh, I can do this, right? I can do some walking, I can raise some money. After all, my parents owe me, so they can sponsor me. And maybe I'll get some friends or neighbors. And I thought that would be the extent of working for Shirley. Well, I was wrong. Um, if you've ever put on a walk, uh, you've got logistical things to do. You need to have water and garbage cans, and then you need people to walk in it. So you've got to recruit people to walk, and you've got to tell people about the walk, and you've got to get them there. That was my job. It was a lot of work, and I didn't necessarily enjoy it, um, but I did it. And then we got to the day of the walk. And uh, in addition to helping Shirley with the logistics, I did still have to walk. So I walked with my dad and I met some of his patients and uh, everything went fine. And at the end, something happened that I wasn't expecting. First, Shirley thanked me, which I expected. But then she said that the work that I had done for her had helped her and had an impact on her and, and an impact on an organization that she cared about, that it was really important what I did. And then my parents thanked me, which I expected. And my dad said how proud he was of me, which I sort of expected. And then he also thanked me on behalf of his patients because many of them were benefiting from the programs that the American Heart Association was doing. And then some of his patients who were walking in the walk, who I'd been introduced to by my dad, thanked me. And they thanked me because this is a really important organization for them. It was helping them get their lives back and getting them healthy so they can continue to live. Well, that hit me, all of that. And all of a sudden I realized that the work I was doing and the way I had been helping Shirley had had an impact on Shirley, of course, and on my dad, but it had an impact on these people I didn't even know. And it made their lives better. I thought, well, I could keep doing this. This feels pretty good. This, this is an all right way to go. So preparing for today's talk, um, I went on YouTube and looked at a bunch of TEDx talks on volunteering. And um, a lot of them had, you know, elaborate charts and slides and I didn't really want to do that because I thought you can find those but maybe you need to hear it 
from me personally, what it means, both as somebody who leads a nonprofit and as somebody who's a volunteer. I did also find a TED Talk on volunteering that had a couple of vulgar jokes. If you were here, I would tell you them maybe offside. Maybe we'll do that later, but not in this talk. So let me just give you my perspective, both as someone who leads an organization and as one who also still volunteers, what it means. So as Harriet mentioned, I'm the CEO of Make-A-Wish of the Greater Bay Area. And we're a pretty small organization. We have about 26 staff. We have another 600 volunteers. And our volunteers do things that we couldn't afford to do without them. We have volunteers who come in the office and they do data entry or they stuff envelopes or they make up wish bags that we give to our wish kids before they go on their wishes. We have volunteers who do fundraising for us, picking up and cleaning up fundraising events or helping enter names into the database or working our auctions or donating goods and services. We have a whole huge number of volunteers that are trained to be wish grantors. They actually work with our kids, getting to the heart of what each child's wish is, working with their parents, and then figuring out how to reveal and celebrate that wish. And they work really closely with our program team to make sure that we can pull the wish off. We also have volunteers who help lead our advisory councils or our boards. They practice their own leadership. They share management techniques with me. They coach me, they encourage me. And I think the other thing that all of our volunteers do is help me and the entire staff recognize that we're part of something bigger, that we've got a really important mission that people wanna be a part of and that we're doing good work. And we're kind of fun to be around too, if I could say that. As a volunteer, I do the same thing. So I have expertise that I've given to lots of organizations whether it's on fundraising, whether it's on speaking, whether it's on recruiting new volunteers or on board governance. I've done other things, um, telling the story, introducing my contacts to an organization. And I've made really good friends. In fact, my son's godmother is one of my best friends who I met over 22 years ago when we were writing envelopes for a fundraising committee for a board that we sat on together. So there's real meaning and impact, whether I'm as the leader, whether as I'm at the volunteer. So let me go back to the original question. Do you ever ask yourself what you're supposed to be doing, why you're here, what it's all about? Because I sure did. And if you do, I've got a couple of ideas. Number one, this is a great place for finding connections to wonderful organizations that need your help and need your skills and need your enthusiasm to so find it. Find one that really appeals to you. Find one that you're curious about and then jump in and volunteer. Show them what you can do, help with their skills, share and have fun, make friends. And chances are the next time you ask yourself that question, you're going to have a pretty good answer to it. Thank you.